It seems that there's now a bit more confirmation on the first few issues of the Combat Patrol magazine. Exact contents and the prices and the way that they're shipped seem to be available on the internet. Let's take a look at these first initial issues, which do look like they could be some of the very best deals that Warhammer 40k has basically ever had on certain miniatures, and could be of interest to some Space Marine and Tyranid collectors. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd just revisit the Warhammer 40k Combat Patrol magazine, now there's a little bit more information available. In this video, let's take a look at the way that the subscription is offered for new people signing up, and the contents of the first issues with respect to that, and how good a deal it's looking. I've talked about this Combat Patrol magazine a couple of times over the last two weeks or so here on the channel. It's the brand new Hachette Parkworks magazine that's going to be coming for 10th edition, first to the UK and then to other countries around the world. It was initially announced by the Fauxhammer website, a site that's got affiliation to Hachette, and they get the news first before everyone else. Since the initial launch though, it looks like there's a Combat Patrol section that's gone live on the Hachette Parkworks website in the UK. It seems to have created a place where you can subscribe to the magazine, though given that it doesn't look like it's promoted actually on the site itself, it's a bit questionable as to whether or not it's supposed to be live. In any case, it could give us some interesting clues as to what's going on with the first few issues and their pricing. In combo with that, Fauxhammer have also revealed the first four issues' contents exactly. Previously, when they first announced it, I believe that they said that they had guesses as to what might be in the first few issues, but hadn't got it confirmed, but now it looks like we do have that confirmation. I thought it would be fun to take a look at both segments, see the initial prices and the potential shipping from Hachette, and take a look at the individual issues one by one, and of course I'll link both Fauxhammer and the sites down in the video description. First up, taking a look at Hachette's website. Currently, if you Google Hachette Combat Patrol, the first thing that comes up is this web page within Hachette's official site. Seems that you might be able to Google it, but not actually click through or search it within the website, which is what makes me think that it might not be supposed to be live yet. I did have a look at some online Reddit discussions about it, and it seems that it does seem to be taking subscriptions. I feel like you might be taking a bit of a risk by subscribing at this time, before it's actually on the site in a more official capacity. You probably wouldn't lose anything by waiting till then. In any case, on the Hachette Combat Patrol website, it gives you a landing page where it gives you a rough description, the same sort of offering as the previous ones, and it says that every 20 issues, it'll bring you a complete game-ready combat patrol force, which I honestly think probably means two combat patrol forces, given that we've seen that there's nine combat patrol boxes on offer, and the magazine is supposed to run for 80 issues. If you click through to that though, then it gives you the details of your first and second deliveries, and it seems that if you sign up, the first shipment that you get is a set of two issues plus a free modelling kit. It looks like the issue one you get at that discounted price of £3 that we've seen before. Then issue two is completely free. And you get the modelling kit with the clippers glue and mould line remover thrown in. That one totally looks like a lost leader to be honest. As, as we'll see it has some fairly cool miniatures in it. They did this last time round as well with the Indomitus contents. The first one came with a Primaris Lieutenant and Royal Warden and was for just £3 and again was kind of spectacular considering what Games Workshop normally prices characters at. Then after that it looks like issues 3 through 6 are bundled together and all of those come at the more standard price of £10 per issue. So the next one's going to set you back really quite a lot more. Looking at the delivery prices within the UK, Hachette's website seems to think that orders over £30 get free shipping, so I guess that will be free shipping on the second delivery, but for the first one you might have to pay £2.50, so I guess that would be £5.50 for the first, and then £40 for the second one, if I'm understanding that right. Getting on to the exciting bit though, and let's take a look at what actual models and contents come with each one of these issues. This one coming from Fauxhammer's site. As previously announced and confirmed by Hachette's website, the first one should be £3, and given how cheap that is, it really is quite spectacular for just about any Warhammer kit. This one gets you two characters, a Space Marine Terminator Captain from Leviathan, and the Winged Prime to fight against, plus six dice and a paper gaming battle map. I must admit the pricing on this is just kind of hilarious compared with how Games Workshop normally sells and packages character miniatures. Typically, character pricing is usually around about £25 for characters being sold individually. And there's nothing really particularly different or worse about these two compared with lots of other things that they might have for other factions. Though I feel like Games Workshop maybe have earmarked these two models just to be discounted in as many ways as possible, really. They both came in the Leviathan box set, and they both came in the 40k starter sets. 
and that does mean that if you're a Space Marine or Tyranid Collector, there's a pretty reasonable chance that you might have these in your armies already. Still though, even with so much supply of these guys going on, even secondhand on eBay at the moment, their price is still significantly more, around about 12 or £13 pounds that I can see in the UK for the Termi Captain, around about 8 for the Winged Prime. So even despite being heavily discounted compared with buying these from someone breaking down the kits or selling off extra ones, the price saving is still going to be significant. Aside from things like free models coming from Games Workshop stores if you turn up to them, this is about as good a deal as you're ever going to get from Warhammer 40k. £3 for two fairly chunky character models, and I feel like if you didn't have either of these in your collection and really did want one, it seems like a pretty good deal to pick up. Moving on to the next issue, and apparently this one is sticking with the Tyranids, for Von Ryan's Leapers at £7. According to that Hachette sub, it seems to list this one as coming free with the £3 magazine, so in theory you might be able to pay £5.50 for the first issue and this one if it's delivered directly from Hachette. Still though, this one looks like a very high value issue, whichever way you look at it. There's three Von Ryan's Leapers here. The price for these being bought individually from Games Workshop is £30. And looking at the second hand market, the price on eBay in the UK seems to be around about the £17 sort of mark, due to them being both in Leviathan and the starter sets. Again, either way, at £7 for this issue, or included with the first one, it does look like a pretty spectacular deal for these guys. I guess that if they do really come out with quite good circulation and lots of people pick this up, there might be a few more flooding the second hand market and bringing that eBay price down further. Overall seems kind of cool if you did want a few more of these though, and you might want several of them if you're playing Vanguard Onslaught or something, they are one of the units that uses their stratagems quite well. I feel like if that's really accurate and you could just literally subscribe to the Partworks magazine and get the first delivery for £3 plus PMP with these guys, then for £5.50 for one squad and two characters, that's just ridiculous deals for Warhammer 40k. Might be one of the single best 40k deals that we've basically ever seen from Games Workshop. Obviously that might well go down a lot if you're unable to cancel from there. Though I might be a little bit apprehensive of that. I have heard a little bit of talk about Heshek customer services being a bit variable. Some people do have absolutely no problems with getting replacements or cancelling things and things like that. But I have heard some people have had difficulty. I would just bear that in mind that there could be a little bit of disconnect between what's actually offered and what they're able to deliver. Overall though, certainly for the first two issues, they feel rather excellent, even in the context of Games Workshop having these miniatures so widely available with Leviathan and starter sets. Next up for issue 3, supposedly according to Fohammer that's going to be 5 Infernus Marines, and this one is where the sub gets up to its full price at £10 per issue, either through the sub or bought individually. I'd say this one maybe isn't quite a deal on the same sort of level as the first two though. These guys are present in fairly big numbers, certainly in Leviathan and also in the starter sets. Currently from Games Workshop we don't actually have the Infernus Marines released individually yet, though I'd guess they'd come at some point. If we went by the price for the Assault Intercessors from GW, it'd be around about £19 as per half of that box, though the Assault Intercessors are a bit more flexible in terms of loadout and posing. On the second hand market at the moment though, they do seem to be going for less than that right now. £13 for a squad of 5 of them more or less. And given that the cost of these is £10 in their issue, the discount on these just seems like far less compared with what you might be able to get them for elsewhere. Depending on access to second hand retailers where you are though, it might still be interesting. And could still be an interesting issue when it's released around the world later on. For this one still looks like a saving, and some fairly cool Space Marines at £2 per model is better than Games Workshop would normally do by quite a long way, but it maybe doesn't feel quite as standout as the first two issues, at least compared with the desirability of the models and where you might be able to find them on eBay. Finally for the revealed Combat Patrol issues so far from Fohammer, we've got issue 4, which a little bit disappointingly only contains paint and a starter brush. I'm sure it'll have great value to some people, but if you were looking at the magazine from a pure how many miniatures that I can get out of it point of view, it might not be quite as much interest. This one's £10 again, and it gets you three base paints, Wraithbone and Baraknar Burgundy, plus a Citadel starter paintbrush. I think for this one, both in terms of the value included and the exact choice of contents, it's a bit less than desirable for me. If you're completely new to the hobby and you're just wanting to follow along with the magazine and paint things up as they intend to you to as they go, then of course this one will be kind of necessary. But if you already collect Warhammer to any extent or have your own paint set set up already, it's probably going to be less use. 
just because you can always go out and pick up the individual paints that you want, rather than just having a random set of them given to you. Individually, the paint pots from Games Workshop would be £8.25, if you did happen to need these exact ones. And then for the starter brush, if you do weigh it at the same sort of value as Games Workshop's other brushes, they started around about £5, so it seems reasonable enough to add that amount on. For the starter brushes, I feel like out of the previous magazines, I heard some variable reports as to how good they were. I did see some people who liked them a lot and other people who felt they weren't great quality. And I would bear in mind that with paint brushes in general, buying them through Games Workshop is likely to be quite expensive compared with the majority of other suppliers. I personally quite like getting quite cheap brushes and just knowing that they might not last quite as long. That still seems to give me far better economy. Overall, a bit of a dodge from the model sort of perspective though. I feel like this one probably isn't one that people are going to be rushing out the store to try and get, and I feel like out of the first issues of them, this one will be the one that's left on the shelf more commonly than others. For the moment, that does seem to leave us with a bit of a mystery as to the contents of issues 5 and 6 though, and it is kind of an important question given that they make up the other two £10 entries into the second delivery. It'd be kind of nice to know whether that next big £40 investment was really going to be all that worth it for the miniatures contained within, or whether the aim of a few people might be just to try and pick up the first couple of issues, either with the sub or in stores individually, and then abandon the sub unless you want to commit to the entire collection and go the long haul with the magazine. Other things to note are that the first issue does get that little Citadel modelling kit, a mould line remover, some plastic cutters and some glue, which is handy enough to have. When I got one of these from, I think it was the Conquest magazine, I didn't really like the clippers quite as much as previous ones I'd got in 40k modelling kits in the past, but might be alright if you don't have any or you want a spare set. Otherwise, for their extra gifts for actually sobbing through them, there's the Citadel paintbrush set that'll be on the 4th delivery apparently, and the Company Champion which would supposedly be on the 7th delivery. At the moment though, I'd probably treat those as rumours as opposed to 100% confirmed, it's not impossible, some things might be changed around slightly from the trial run period that we're in at the moment to the full magazine release, presumably later in the year. In any case though, let me know what you think of the first few issues of Warhammer 40k Combat Patrol. Look forward to hearing your thoughts and ideas, and I'll link the Hachette Partworks site and Fauxhammer down in the video description. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, but I'll certainly keep the regular 40k news coming, I do tend to cover Games Workshop's news and updates here on the channel, with new videos out most days. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos that I make, any support on the channel's Patreon page is enormously appreciated, channel patrons do get a few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.